Welcome, Hudson Valley. This is Connor Walsh, host of In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. Whether you stuck to your New Year's resolutions or you faded out of it a little bit, registered dietitian Carolina Schneider returns to In Touch to help us with our New Year's resolutions and discusses how to handle our New Year's diets. She goes into the pros and cons of a plant-based diet and if it would be right for you. We invite you to join us and listen to a previously recorded conversation between Carolina Schneider and myself here on In Touch. Thank you for all the kind words shared in regard to In Touch officially being awarded the 2023 New York State Broadcasters Association Award for Outstanding Public Affairs Program or Series as part of the 57th Annual Excellence in Broadcasting Awards. This recognition would not be possible without the incredible team here at Town Square, all of our phenomenal guests that we learn and grow with every single week, and of course you. The listener. Whether you've been listening for a while or you just found us, thank you for taking part in the conversation and staying in touch with what's going on in the Hudson Valley. We here at In Touch are all about, well, being in touch with what's going on in the Hudson Valley. What better way to stay in touch with what's going on than by downloading the Town Square Media mobile app for this radio station? Not only can you listen to this station live at any time using the app, but you can also listen to In Touch on demand. Besides In Touch, you can read daily articles about news, events, entertainment, and more that's going on in your community. And when the weather gets bad, you can use the app to check on weather reports and see which roads, schools, and organizations are closed. Your Town Square media app is the best place for concert tickets and events as well. We're constantly giving away tickets to the hottest shows in the area. Again, you'll have access to all of this if you just download the Town Square media mobile app for this radio station. In Touch is nothing without the support of the hundreds of listeners that we get on a weekly basis. Thank you so much for listening and taking part in the conversation. If you listen to In Touch through a podcast service such as Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please consider leaving a positive review. With more five-star reviews on these platforms, the algorithms will work hard to promote our show and bring In Touch to new people. That and also sharing In Touch with your friends and family is so important. Just sharing our links and listening live each Sunday goes such a long way. Thank you for all you do to stay in touch with what's going on in the Hudson Valley. Hello, Hudson Valley. You're listening to another episode of In Touch. Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's public affairs and issues program. Have a great episode for you guys today, especially for those who want to take control of their diet. It's 2024, new year, and a lot of people are trying to find the best way to eat, the best way to get nutrition, and there's so many things out there saying one thing or another, so it's kind of hard to figure it all out. People are just screaming, hey, just tell me what to eat and I'll eat it, I'll figure it out, right? One thing that is very good for a lot of people are plant-based diets. It's not for everybody, but there's a lot of great benefits for those who take advantage of it. And even if it's not completely plant-based, it's a lot that you can get out of it and learn from and incorporate it into your life. And we have an expert on the topic and so happy to have her back on the show. With us here on In Touch, we have registered dietitian Carolina Schneider. Carolina, how are you? Happy New Year. Hi, Connor. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for having me. Really happy to have you back here on the show and really excited to be talking about plant-based diets for everybody here because I think there's a lot of misconceptions and there's a lot of things that people are missing out when it comes to their food. I've talked to a number of uh, food and health experts and one thing that they always keep saying is like people need to be eating more vegetables and it's like why is it such a hard thing to do even as adults? I understand when we're kids we're always telling our, uh, our kids eat more vegetables but even as adults we all struggle with that. What seems to be the issue why adults can't get enough vegetables in their day-to-day -day routine? That's an excellent question. So I do think the environment plays such a big role. You know, we see in different countries, um, you know, that I've personally traveled to where food, healthy foods and plant-based foods and fruits and vegetables are just so accessible. They um, are less expensive and they are just readily available, you know, depending on the country you're in. You know, I'm from Brazil originally. So um, fruits and vegetables are a staple food in our day-to-day. -day. They're cheap, um, you know, they're easy to get. So I do think it's it's more of the, the environment than the people. Um, I know it's, it's very difficult in the U.S., to follow a plant-based, you know, healthy diet because every corner we have a junk food or fast yes. food restaurant 
They are very inexpensive. You know, you can purchase an entire meal of a cheeseburger, fries, and a soda for three, four, five dollars maybe. Whereas, you know, if you're you're buying some fresh fruits and vegetables, um, it can seem more expensive, and sometimes it is. So, it, it is definitely a matter of setting yourself up and your environment up for success um, in your home, and making sure that you are making uh, vegetables available, but also make sure they're tasting good, right? Because that's a a big concern. People tell me, oh, I know I have to eat broccoli, but I just don't like it. It doesn't taste good. So knowing how to season your foods and incorporate veggies into your recipes, it's so important so you can actually enjoy them. Absolutely. And that was something I was going to bring up too, besides the fact of just trying to get enough people to eat their vegetables. A lot of people think that, eating so many vegetables or having a plant-based diet, it's not a quote-unquote fun diet. You're taking away a lot of quote-unquote fun. It's not as tasty. But to be honest, as somebody who has been incorporating a lot more plant-based meals in my daily life, I'm finding great ways and exciting ways to make that happen. And uh, you mentioned spices already, but if you could go into that a little bit more for us of how it's still fun and interesting to eat healthy. (laughs) Absolutely, um, Karina, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this because people become accustomed to, um, you know, whatever they're eating. So, for example, in the U.S., you know, our foods are really high fat and high sugar and high salt food. Yep. So your taste buds are accustomed to that. So it, it's expecting that every time. So if you're used to eating French fries and then eating, you know, a brownie, that highly salty and highly sweet taste will um, be what your body's expecting every time. So when you eat a steamed broccoli, it, your body's like, well, what is this, right? Like, where is the salt? And so it's, first of all, it's knowing that you can become accustomed to whatever you eat, you know, in the long term as you incorporate it more often. Um, so like you're saying, you're incorporating more more plant-based food. Your body's probably now used to the lower salt, um, the more kind of natural flavors of the, the food versus that really highly processed food that we eat in the U.S. So, you know, when it comes to making vegetables and, you know, plant foods tastier, I think my best tip, honestly, if you're starting, is to just look at recipes that you currently love. So, for example, um, I love lasagna. I've always oh, loved so it. Good. And I, you know, so good. Um, comfort food, delicious. And I wanted to learn how to make a healthier lasagna because I'm also plant-based. So I looked at um, veggie-based lasagnas. And, you know, you wouldn't believe how many vegetables go into making a vegetable lasagna. You have zucchini and eggplant and spinach and tomatoes and carrots. So following a recipe of a meal that you already love, a dish that you love, but a healthier alternative is an excellent way to learn how to season, um, you know, vegetables better. But then also taking advantage of fresh herbs and spices. So, you know, basil, cumin, parsley, adding that to your salad. I actually... Connor just started doing this about a year ago. I add fresh herbs to my salad. So, you know, fresh mm-hmm. basil or, or fresh parsley. And it's so delicious because the fresh herb is so much more, t- you know, tasty um, than the dried one. So, uh, but playing around with spices and seasonings, um, looking up recipes, you know, things like curry um, recipes are very rich in flavor. So you can make a, a veggie curry and, you know, that, you know, by By default, the more you do that, the more you learn how to season vegetables properly. Absolutely. I love everything that you said there, especially uh, one with the curry. I like doing this uh, cauliflower curry uh, recipe at home. That's been really good. And then also actually with uh, the veggie lasagna and everything, I got a pretty decent spinach lasagna recipe that I've been doing for a little while now too. So all good stuff, and I'm happy to hear you kind of reinforce a few of those things for me. I appreciate hearing it myself. So, I love it. Yeah, so, so good. So when it comes to, you know, 2024, people want to eat healthy. People want to get into some of these diets. And among the top 10 plant-based foods, uh, leafy greens are often considered, you know, the most nutritional powerhouses out of these diets. Can you elaborate on the health benefits and creative ways to incorporate them into our diets? And I want to rest assure people that it's more than just bland iceberg lettuce. There is so much more to good leafy greens than just that. 
Absolutely, Connor. So just to give a little bit of context, um, leafy greens, what we mean by that are things like kale and spinach, you know, the different types of lettuce, Swiss chard, we have collard greens, arugula, um, all of these kind of salad greens, but the darker, the better. So that is true. Um, the, the dark leafy greens are more nutritious because they have um, a higher concentration of vitamins and minerals in the, in the pigments of the food, which makes it darker. So that's just like a little tip when you're shopping. But obviously, they're all extremely nutritious. The reason why leafy greens are so good for us, they're the top of my list for best foods to eat, is because they provide the most nutrients per gram. So, you know, we, we talked about, uh, I think you mentioned nutrient density earlier Um the, new, the, the more nutrients you find per gram of a food makes it more nutrient dense. So that means that leafy greens are just excellent at providing a lot of nutrients, even, you know, if you're just eating a little bit here and there. Now, the benefits um, are that kind of stand out the most for leafy greens are the vitamin content. So we have vitamin A, which we need for um, your vision health. We have vitamin C. They're one of the best sources of vitamin C. We know that for the immune system, also for your skin health is very important. And they're excellent uh, sources of vitamin K, which is the type of vitamin that you need for blood clotting. So if you, you know, cut yourself by accident when you're cooking your veggies, the ability of your blood to clog itself so you don't bleed to death, um, it's due to vitamin K. So it's extremely important for us to have um, enough of that. So um, now you mentioned, you know, you don't have to just eat salad, you know, lettuce with, you know, a little bit of salt. And actually, I will tell you, Connor, I rarely eat that. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, people are always asking me, like, well, you eat so many greens. Like, aren't you tired of salads? And I I don't eat a lot of salad, to be honest. I like to cook these vegetables. I think it really brings out the flavor. So a few Mm. ideas if you want to get some more kale, spinach, bok choy into your diet – Cook them into recipes. So things like stir fries are excellent. You know, think about a uh, veggie stir fry with bok choy, some broccoli, and snap peas. You just you can cook that with a lot of garlic and onions. You can put some soy sauce. You get a little salt here. And that it already is an excellent meal. You can also, of course, incorporate these raw leafy greens into smoothies. That's a very easy way to mm. eat a lot of uh, green vegetables. Uh, if you have kids at home, definitely take advantage of that. Just sneak in some sneak it in. a few handfuls of spinach into yep, sneak yep. it in um, into a blueberry smoothie, banana, a strawberry smoothie, and um, your kids won't even taste it, but be getting benefits. So. There. So it's so much more than, than salad, definitely. No, that's great. I, I'm glad that you're able to help break that down for us. Myself, you know, I have nothing against having a salad every once in a while. I'll have like a chicken salad for lunch myself. But uh, and when I say chicken salad, I don't mean like the chicken salad with mayonnaise. I mean like a nice leafy salad <laughs> with all these different stuff with chicken on top. But no, uh, it's so good. And it's great ways to be able to mix that in. I like mixing in spinach with uh random recipes that I'm doing. It's like, oh, I can throw this in, just give it a little benefit to it. So I love that. Uh, So, so good. Again, you're listening to In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's Public Affairs and Issues program. We're speaking with registered dietitian Carolina Schneider, talking about the benefits of plant-based diets moving ahead in 2024. We've been talking about the benefits of dark leafy greens in particular and how it can be fun to have a plant-based diet besides just having bland salads all the time. There are so many great ways to take advantage of it. Something that you mentioned already is uh, throwing together like broccoli into a lot of things. And there's other vegetables, similar line, uh, cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts as well. I feel like those are kind of vegetables that kind of, they're on the line. Some people really love them. Some people really hate them. But um, personally, like broccoli, I think it's great. It fills me up. So I really love that. But like, what's, uh, what are some of those benefits of going for those kinds of vegetables now? Yeah. So um, cruciferous vegetables, as you said, include broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and even cabbage. Um, The benefits are numerous. I mean, we have a ton of research, um, especially on, you know, cancer cells that show that cruciferous vegetables are able to stop the growth of cancer cells. Of course, I'm generalizing. Um, These are very specific studies. 
but we do see great potential of these type of vegetables in reducing risk um, of some types of cancer. Um, they're highly anti-inflammatory and they're excellent sources of B vitamins. We need B vitamins for just healthy metabolism and energy and also folate. So for women who are pregnant or looking to get pregnant, it's probably the most important nutrient in your uh-huh. diet when you are pregnant because it helps develop your baby's brain and, and cruciferous vegetables are excellent sources of that. So, um, but you're right, Connor, you know, these, these vegetables are tough. Uh, either you love them or you hate them, but I will give you a tip. You know, think about a head of broccoli, eating raw broccoli, which I can sometimes do. I don't love it, but I have a <laughs> lot of friends who love dipping um, raw broccoli into hummus, right? As a, mm. with a snack. That's great. But that's that's more difficult to do because it's a very bland type of vegetables. It's very hard to digest, like hard yeah. to chew even. So um, it's very dry. So personally, if you want to eat anything more broccoli and cauliflower, throw them in the air fryer, make them roasted, put some Ooh. olive oil, a little bit of salt, some oregano, whatever herbs you like, and throw those babies in the air fryer or uh, your oven and cook them up into roasted vegetables. That makes all the difference. So if you're trying to get more broccoli, raw broccoli is not the way, trust me. Um, just make them roasted. I know, Connor, you mentioned um, cauliflower earlier with curry. I mean, yep. if you do that in an air fryer, it is so delicious. I don't know if you've tried it. Not with an air fryer. I've done it on the stove more than anything else, but I'll have to try it air fryer wise too. That would be a good idea. Really like that. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, it's delicious. And, you know, when you go to restaurants, you see Brussels sprouts that, um, you know, are roasted they're, or like charred, uh, grilled. Um, it makes it all the difference. So, again, try to um, make it make it more enjoyable for yourself. And the cooking method plays a huge role. But like steamed broccoli, it's also, you know, great and very nutritious, but it's more bland, right? Mm. So if you're not a person who loves these vegetables, Make them fun. Make them tasty. Put in some olive oil. There's nothing wrong with that. A little bit of salt and enjoy them roasted. That's probably my best tip or throw them in a, a stir fry. Absolutely. I, I love a good stir fry with broccoli myself personally. It's one of my favorite vegetables, but trust me, I also know that majority of my friends, I pull out anything broccoli related. It's like, really, dude? And it's like, what? really? You are 20 something, 30 something years old. <laughs> this is how you're still reacting to broccoli. But understandable, you know, everybody's got their different tastes. But uh, I want to move right. outside of vegetables now. One thing we haven't talked about as much are fruits and uh, particularly berries. Berries are high in antioxidants. And I feel like there's people that, you know, they go for berries, they love berries, but then there might be some texture issues. People aren't always big on the texture of berries. But as you were saying, like there's, you can throw smoothies together, things along those lines. Could you go into the benefits of berries and how people can sneak those into their diets? Absolutely. So berries are one of the best sources of antioxidants, something that we we need on a daily basis. So eating uh, berries regularly is very important. So um, what antioxidants do essentially, they protect our cells, to put it simply. So um, as we go on about our days, we're exposed to different pollutants in, in, in you know, environmental um, toxins. And when we exercise even, we produce something called free radicals. And these are just very unstable molecules in your body that cause disease that can damage your cells. So antioxidants come in and neutralize them and, you know, act as like the military to protect your cells. So they are extremely important. And what they do um, in the long term, you know, they reduce oxidative stress. People may have heard that term, but it's essentially reducing your risk for disease and even slowing aging because oxidative stress Mm -hmm. causes you to age faster. So um, beyond that, they're excellent sources of, you know, fiber and vitamin C. So You mentioned, Connor, of course, smoothies are an excellent way to have them if you buy them frozen. They're pretty inexpensive if they're frozen. I know when they're fresh, it's a little different, but right, like buying it at, you know, at a, like a Costco or something like that. That's where I get mine. Organic um, is possible and keep them in the freezer, throw them in the, in the smoothie. But I will tell you, I know we talked about salads. I personally love throwing fresh berries. Uh, fresh blueberries into my salad. There you go. So if I make a big salad, and especially in the summertime, you know, strawberries or blueberries fresh in your salad, trust me, it just 
gives like a burst of flavor. So um, many ways to enjoy them, of course, if you like oatmeal in the morning, mm. um, even if you like right, some toast with nut butter, so toast with peanut butter, just put some like sliced uh, strawberries on top and that already makes a big difference on your health. Absolutely. No, I love that. Something I've done. Yeah, I've done that. Uh, sliced strawberries. I put blueberries on top of like uh, uh, bread and uh, uh, peanut butter, of course. And that's real good. Uh, I'll throw it into like some Greek yogurt, too. Um, but when it comes to the berries, uh, what are some of the best berries to be looking out for to include in our uh, daily diets? Yeah, so the, the number one, um, by far is wild blueberries. Um, so we have regular blueberries and the wild blueberries are the very small ones. Um, you can buy them frozen. They are pretty hard to find fresh. I actually don't know if I've seen them fresh, to be honest, but hmm. um, frozen wild blueberries um, are, are excellent. I think they're a little bit pricier than regular, but trust me, that goes a long way. They have higher levels of antioxidants um, and nutrients. So, but don't, don't get me wrong, all berries are excellent. They're all very nutritious. So blueberries, raspberries, um, and um, strawberries are probably the best. We also have blackberries that are great. Even cherries can fall into that category. But definitely wild blueberries is, is the way to go if you can. That's awesome. No, that's good. And hey, in my opinion, I love them, but I know there's a lot of people who have like those texture issues when it comes to berries. So kind of as we said, sneaking some of these things into uh, some of our foods, cooking in or blending in or whatever, that you can do the same thing over here as well. And I like that. And kind of uh, this way it's disguised, but it works out. And there's so many good yeah. ways of having it. And I really, really love that. So one of the main things when people criticize plant-based diets is that people are worried that you're not getting enough nutrition or enough uh minerals or enough protein, things along those lines. So that's one of those main things that people criticize about it. But is that necessarily true? And if people are worried about getting those extra vitamins and nutrients, are there good ways of supplementing that uh, where it still can be sustainable? Absolutely. Yes, uh, a plant-based diet can meet all of your nutritional needs. Absolutely. But it has to be done um, with some planning, right? So just switching to a plant-based diet overnight without any planning um, can definitely lead to some nutrient deficiencies. So a few things to look for. One nutrient that you simply cannot get on a plant-based diet is vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 doesn't actually come from animals, as most people think. It comes from a bacteria in the soil that the animals end up consuming because they consume the foods that come from hmm. that soil. So we have a little fun fact here. So uh, when we eat animal proteins, we're getting B12 kind of indirectly uh, yeah. from the soil. But on the plant-based diet, there's some foods that are fortified, not enough to meet your needs. Vitamin B12 is crucial in your diet. So supplementing this vitamin is essential for the rest of your life. Luckily, it's very inexpensive, very easy to find. But that's one thing that you really can't negotiate if you're fully plant-based. Now, if you're still consuming some eggs, uh, maybe if you're a vegetarian or you're eating fish, you're pescatarian, you're you're probably fine. Definitely get your blood work checked um, if that's the case to make sure. But any animal um, source of protein will have, you know, B12. We only need a little bit, so you should be fine. Um, other things to look for. So protein, I know you mentioned. So protein is a, it's a big myth. I mean, there's so much protein in plant foods. It's Absolutely. just knowing how to, you know, consume a variety of them and just making sure you're you're getting plenty of food in you know quantity wise of course we can find protein in beans lentils chickpeas yes. but the best sources of protein on a plant-based diet are coming from soy so tofu tempeh and edamame are excellent things to eat i personally eat tofu almost every day um <laughs> it's a very high protein source. But it, it's very easy to get, Connor, really. Um, even oats that are mostly carbohydrates, oh, yes. even oats have protein. So um, it's just, you know, doing with some planning. So what I recommend to people is if you're thinking about getting more plants or going plant-based, 
first talk to a dietitian just to make sure you're covering all your nutrients. Um, something that I didn't mention, iron and calcium are two that could be um, harder to get from plants. There's plenty of them in plants, but what happens is plants have a defense mechanism that makes it a little bit harder for us to get those nutrients out. So just working with the dietitian to understand the sources of these foods, of these nutrients, uh, and having a well-rounded, ba uh, balanced diet, including a variety of plant foods, so you're not just eating the same things every day. No, absolutely. Having that variety, finding that balance, and as you said, finding somebody to talk to about it, somebody who understands these things. Uh, one, of, one of the things I was talking with with somebody recently, you know, when you have an issue with your car, you go to a mechanic. When you have an issue with your computer, you go to uh, an IT guy. But when it comes to our own health, mm -hmm. most of the time we are so, we are so scared or we're so fearful or so ignorant sometimes to go and talk to somebody about it, even though it's one of the most natural things we can do. So it's just interesting uh, to bring that all up. So I'm glad that you said that. Again, you're listening to In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. We're speaking with Carolina Schneider, registered dietitian, and we are speaking about the fun ways that you can enjoy a plant-based diet and how it can give you a vast array of vitamins, nutrients, minerals, the things that you need, and also how to supplement it if you need that based on your diet and your body composition. That is such a big thing. Carolina, thank you so much for being here on this episode. Greatly appreciate having you on again. For those who are interested in finding you, any of the stuff that you post online, any of your tips on eating healthier and plant-based diets, where should people go to get more information from you? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at Carolina the Green RD, RD as in registered dietitian. So Carolina the Green RD on Instagram, or you can go to my website, um, hungryforplants.com, and you can reach out to me there. And you know, I'm happy to chat if anyone has any questions. But thank you so much for having me, Connor, and um, for you know spreading the word about healthy eating and helping people feel better through their diet. Absolutely. Hey, I, you're the one that's saying all this stuff. I'm just asking the questions and making sure that you have the spotlight for it. So greatly appreciated. I'm sure this is going to help out a lot of people. And I know I've been including a lot of the stuff in my daily, daily life and it's really helped me. So, you know, thank you so much for everything. And again, happy new year to you. Thank you so much. Happy new year. This has been this week's edition of In Touch, the award-winning public affairs and issues program that runs across Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley radio stations. We want to give a big thank you to Carolina Schneider. For more information on Carolina, follow her on Instagram at Carolina the Green RD, or check out her link tree at linktr.ee slash the Green RD. Of course, all links and information can be found in the description of this episode. Whether you've been listening for a while or you just joined us, thank you. You can find In Touch episodes new and old on your favorite streaming services like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. That and listen on demand with your Town Square Radio Station mobile app. Of course, you can still find all articles and audio under the In Touch tab on this radio station's app and website. And don't forget, we're also on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at InTouch underscore HV. If you like what we do here on In Touch and want to be on the show, let us know. Whether you have a topic you want to discuss or you want to be a guest, you can fill out the In Touch submission form, which can be found in the description of this episode. I've been your host, Connor Walsh. Until next time, stay curious, keep an open mind, and as always, I'm glad we get to spend some time. <laughs>